A bed sheet made of slime and that turned me into a ghost. Yep, this is episode two intro. What's going on guys, Deadly Raven here and welcome to episode two of my Road to Max Iron Man series. We finished episode one by learning to teleport to Ardone City from the Plague City quest. That's one of the rewards for it. And now episode two is going to be focused on the pursuit of barrel gloves. Those are the best in-slot items in the glove slot for any character. And especially as an Iron Man, I might as well get that out of the way first because it will give me access to quests like Desert Treasure, Heroes Quest, Lost City, Dragon Slayer, Monkey Madness. So my account will be very well rounded once I finish all those quests. In my opinion, the most important thing you should do on your account as soon as you start is get all the quests that level up combat between the 1 to 40 range out of the way. So that's stuff like Grand Tree, Vampire Slayer, and all the combat quests. The reason being is because nobody wants to train 1 to 40 attack through chickens, and it might as well allow you to do it through quests because you can't compare the experience. I mean, I got 39 attack from Grand Tree, Waterfall, and Vampire Slayer. And what I wanted to do on the account right off the bat is get all the free to play quests out of the way. So we started off with Grand Tree, went to Lumbridge for Restless Ghost, then we went to do Vampire Slayer, Ernest the Chicken, Pirate's Treasure, Demon Slayer, and then Doric's Quest. All these quests took no time at all, but by efficiently doing them one after the other, I was able to get all the free to play quests out of the way in one day and get as many quest points as I could at once. But even that so, they do give some important levels like smithing and crafting. So Goblin Village gave me a couple of crafting levels and then Knight Sword gave me a nice boost in smithing from 1 to 30 without having to mine any copper or tin whatsoever. See, sometimes I wonder how good I really am at this game when you see people like recommending Trino Village right off the top. I'm like, guys, I almost died like three times during that quest. How the hell are you doing it at level 10 HP? But we also managed to make some more gains out of the way in the shape of Prince Ali Rescue Quest Completion, Gertrude's Cat, Druidic Ritual, The Feud, and Witch's House. These quests combined give you access to a cat, the Herblore skill, coins, thieving XP, and a lot of hit point XP. Now, why the cat is very important, besides the recipe for disaster itself, is because one, every time your cat grows, you can go in the West Ardon, especially if you have the cape, you get double death runes. So you'll be getting 200 death runes every time your cat grows. So that's about 200 death runes every two to three hours at the cost of three to four shrimp. I also got 31 crafting in Sears Village just to complete the Lost City quest. And you needed that basically to craft the Draymond Staff. Uh, Murder Mystery Quest gave me a lot of coins and a bit of crafting XP and a lot of quest points. Eyes of Glue Free was 12,000 Magic XP and 6,000 Rune Crafting XP. And then Recruitment Drive gave me 1k Prayer, Herblor, and Agility XP. So I'm already leveling up Herblor without having made a single potion. Tourist Trap gives you the ability to make darts. And it's a prerequisite for some quests down the road. Dig site is 15,000 mining XP, 2,000 herblore XP, and gold bars, which will be used to make rings of dueling and gaming necklaces. We're going to use these to teleport around the map, which is going to make it a lot easier to get wherever we need to when we have more quests going. Fishing competition gives you a couple of fishing points for experience and gives you access to the White Wolf Mountain Passageway. The bone crossbow is probably the best weapon that you can use before you get your rune crossbow from the crazy archaeologist. And it's going to be a long time until I get a magic short bow. The Nature Spirit quest gives a lot of prayer XP and it's important because it's a prerequisite for some quests down in Mauritania. So I want to get those out of the way. And we got 34 crafting out of this way to make some ruby rings as well. Pro tip, as soon as you're done the quest, pray at the Nature Altar to unlock one of the achievement diaries. Now I wanted to get Search of the Q out of the way and one of the requirements for that quest is you need to have a steel warhammer that you gotta give out to somebody. So I thought instead of running around the game to find where who sells them, I might as well just gain the 12,000 smithing experience through completing Elemental Workshop 1 and Elemental Workshop 2. The first part gives you 5,000 smithing XP and the second part gives you 7,500 smithing XP. So those quests combined got me to 39 smithing which allowed me to make the steel warhammers for the upcoming quest 
as well as giving me a lot of crafting levels. And now I'm sitting at 38 crafting with minimal resources used. Here's the completion of Search of the Mire queue, and we got a quick route through Morton, as well as some attack, defense, strength, hit points, and some more crafting experience as well. All right, first clue reward. Let's see what we got. Ooh, I got an armor deal page. Holy fuck. No way. Yeah, bro, first clue. Yes. God damn it. The RNG is real. Holy shit. I headed over to the Lava Dragons to make some friends until I met this guy. He has no idea how hard it was to come by those mage robes. Oh my god. And he's going to leave him on the floor there. What a piece of shit. Oh my god. But little did he know that mama didn't raise no quitter, so there I was again in another world going against the lava dragons, leveling up my magic. I got 55 magic and I was feeling all tough, and then I realized I have no damage whatsoever. So I was like, screw this, went back to questing, and I got Ghost Ahoy out of the way for 2.5k prayer experience, followed by Merlin's Crystal for 6 quest points. Merlin's Crystal gives you a lot of quest points, which is good for my main goal of barrel gloves. But at the same time, it's a prerequisite for Holy Grail, which is 11,000 prayer experience and 15,000 defense XP, which are both very boring stats to train early on. Especially as Iron Man, I'm going to have to be getting so many bones by myself for that amount of prayer XP. I got Animal Magnetism out of the way as well because it's just going to help me boost my range damage thanks to the accumulator on my back, which is going to help give me a little bit of a boost. And then I followed that up by Spirits of the Elid. So between those two quests, I got 19,000 prayer XP, which made the journey to 43 prayer a lot shorter. Putting on Ava's attractor and my range armor, I headed over to the wilderness with my bone crossbow as well. And I decided to range a couple of green dragons and it was about 30 dragon bones that got me from 42 prayer to 43, which did not take any time at all. And with 43 prayer, I was able to tackle now some big quests like Monkey Madness. See, the struggle is real when you have four anti-poison potions in total and you have no access to food besides trout. So I had to be very careful with what I did. So every little point of damage was absolutely terrifying. I got caught a couple times and I got started getting hit for like 10s and 12s and I thought my like career was going to be over, but I somehow managed to get through all of it. And here we are getting the reward for Monkey Madness, got 10k gold and the diamonds. And this is probably my favorite thing about Monkey Madness. You get so much XP that would cost, again, so much time to do that I'd rather just spend questing because at the same time, yeah, questing is annoying and it's a nuisance, but you get, I got 45 strength, 40 defense, 47 attack, and 50 health. Our account's starting to shape up very well now at about 100 plus quest points, and we have at least 40 in all the melee offensive and defensive stats. I headed over to Apatol after this to buy my Dragon Scimitar, which I'm going to be saving for a lot later. So I don't really plan on training any strength now unless the rewards come from quest until I get the Decimi and then I'm just going to blow up in 80 plus strength. We're almost done with the questing guys, so bear with me. Next episode, I'm going to have it out of the way in the first uh, couple minutes and then we're going to be targeting some skilling and more PVM content, probably a lot more Slayer and hopefully we get some more good drops. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I have a lot more content coming out. And hit me up if you have any questions about any videos you might want me to do or any suggestions that things that you might want to see. Catch you guys later and take care for now.